Welcome everybody to another Fighting Nerd Reaction. I am Pookie Alvarez. Black E.T. And today we are reacting to another pitch meeting by you say Screen Rant. I think it's Screen Rant, yeah. And this pitch meeting is going to be from The Meg. Yes, this pitch meeting is for The Meg. Now if you haven't seen The Meg... Spoilers, bitches! Yes. It's an amazing movie. We shot Spoilers. Should... Spoilers. Your spoiler warning. No, we're not going to put spoiler warning in between. Just know that the flashing hands mean spoiler. <laughs> His jazz hands mean spoiler. <sighs> Anyways. Anyways, let's watch the pitch meeting. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's about a 70-foot-long prehistoric shark. Oh, kind of sounds like one of those low-budget made-for-TV movies like Sharknado or Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus. Right, yeah, it's kind of like that, except it's going to cost $150 million to make. What? Yeah, it's going to be a pricey <laughs> what? one. Why would we spend so much money on a movie like that? Because we can afford it. Fair enough. That is why I do most of the things that I do. Oh, it is? I mean, yeah. Why do you think I had plastic surgery to look exactly like you? Oh, I thought it was... <laughs> going crazy. That explains so much. <laughs> so what sets this movie apart from, say, a classic like Jaws? Well, you know how that movie was about trying to take down a really big shark? Of course. Well, this one's going to be about taking down a really, really big shark. That sounds different and worth doing. Agreed. And what actually happens in the movie? Like, who's the main character? It's this super cool guy named Jonas, but everyone's going to pronounce it Jonas. Nice. And he had to make a tough decision a couple of years ago where he rescued some people but left some others to die. Bummer. And during that rescue mission, he thinks he saw some Something big bite the side of the submarine. Oh, starting the movie off with a shark sighting. I like it. No, we're not going to see the shark for like the first 45 minutes of the movie. Oh, we're not. No, it's going to keep bumping into these submarines that are covered in windows, but somehow nobody's going to see it. Huh, stealth mode. Oh yeah, super stealth mode. In fact, <laughs> even when we do start seeing it, it's going to sneak up on people all the time. But you said this thing's like 70 feet long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like if yeah, a yeah, yeah. snuck up on you. Well, do you want jump scares or not? I guess I do. Anyway, so a couple of years later, we're going to be at this research facility in the ocean off the coast of China. Uh, okay. And and there's this woman there, and she's Chinese woman. Sure. And then later there's a beach. Just Chinese beach. Okay, what's going on here? Sorry, it's just that a lot of the production budget is going to come from China, so we have to throw in some Chinese elements in there to keep them happy. All we have to do is include a couple of Chinese elements, and they'll give us a bunch of money. It's as easy as that. Pandarin and Mandarin is tight. That is great. <laughs> so anyway, this research team is going to realize tight. that the Mariana Trench isn't actually the deepest point of the ocean. Oh. Yeah, there's like this false bottom, so they go through that for the first time ever to explore. Oh, I bet there are sharks trapped down there. Yeah, and on the way out, they accidentally set this massive prehistoric shark free. Whoops. Whoopsie. So then the shark starts attacking them and killing people and stuff. Wow. And Jonas is gonna be like, I told you guys I saw one of these things, and they're all gonna be like, man, we're sorry, you were right. Wait, if this thing was trapped below the lowest known point of the ocean, how is it possible for him to have seen it? I don't know, but we're gonna keep bringing it up, okay? That works. We're also going to have a love story between Jonas and the female lead. Oh, what makes them fall in love? Well, they're both attractive and in the same <coughs> general area. Very romantic. Oh, yeah. So are we trying to make this like a fun, oh, creepy yeah. movie that knows what it is or something that's more serious in tone? Well, we're going to kind of flip-flop back and forth between the two. Feels like you should probably just stick to one. Uh, I'd rather not. I don't think you can have uh, it both I'd ways, man. Not. It's going to feel disjointed and inconsistent. Well, look, people say you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Right, my point exactly. But we're talking about a 70-foot shark here. This thing can eat whatever it wants. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Trust me, it does. Fantastic. And the movie's gonna be really fun to watch because it's gonna be super gory. Oh, is that like an important part of your vision for this movie? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, well just a heads up, I'm probably gonna change that so we get a PG-13 rating. Oh, please don't do that. We'll just replace all the blood and gore with some one-liner jokes that don't really land. That'll be just as good, right? Definitely won't be. Oh well, so how does the movie end? <laughs> well, the team has to kill the shark before it reaches this beach with thousands of people at it. How do they manage that? They don't. The shark gets there before them and just starts chomping down on humans. Oh my god, so it's gonna be impossible to get him out of there since he's already eating. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, they're just gonna play some whale sounds on a speaker and the shark's gonna be like, oh, what's going on over there? The shark is just <laughs> gonna abandon all the food that he's eating because he thinks he hears a whale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like leaving yeah, a free yeah, yeah. buffet because you think you hear a food truck drive by. Yeah, and then some people in helicopters are gonna see the commotion and start filming. 
oh, the shark's gonna jump out of the water and grab a helicopter? That's gonna be amazing. No, the pilots are gonna be so distracted that they're gonna crash into each other and die. That might be the biggest missed opportunity I've ever heard of. And then Jonas is gonna stab the shark in the eye and everyone's gonna live happily ever after. Except all the dead people. Right, so what do you think? I mean, it sounds good. I think we just need to get a ridiculous action star attached and it can make some real money. A ridiculous action star? Who'd you have in mind? I don't know, it has to be an actor that when you see their name on a movie poster, you're like, oh, this is gonna be way over the top. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you think could have done that role and been like, oh yeah, I'm still gonna see this. This is gonna be horrible, but I want to see it. Um. Nick Cage. I would, well, if Nick Cage did, it probably wouldn't have gone out in theaters. Not anymore. I'm trying to think of another action star. Stallone. He can big old. <laughs> he can big old shark out here. Uh, down at the bottom. <laughs> That's the worst Stallone I've ever done. I don't know why I can't do Stallone right now. I can do Stallone. <laughs> okay, fuck it. It was Arnold. Ah, There's a shock. It's coming. Get to the chopper. I'm trying to think about ac action stars, and I can't think of any right now because I'm really bad with names. The Rock. No, that would have been a three. It would have made a lot more money. But, see, the, the the movie wouldn't have been that long because all The Rock got to do is punch the fucking shark and be over with. Just like San Andreas. He punched the earthquake and then it was over. <laughs> Bam. Uh, mm -hmm. Kurt Russell. Uh, I don't know. The Bruce Willis. No. Bruce yeah. Willis, No. He makes shitty die. Ooh! The guy from Gamer and, uh, uh, White House Down. And Olymp no, no, it's Olympus Has Fallen and London Has Fallen. Gerard Butler, yeah. 300 dude, the dude from 300. Oh, okay. Yes, he would be, would have been great in this. He's in that Hunter 77 or whatever movie we did a trailer reaction to, but then it got flagged. Yeah, he would have been great. He would he would have been great in this movie. I can. See this it. is Meg. Jean Claude. Oh God, that would have been terrible. Yeah, the vehicle. Why did I almost say spider? Yeah. <laughs> no, you better. You don't. You don't need. You don't need an action star. What you need is Seth MacFarlane. So he can tell until the the shark is the shark's like roaring and he tells us shut up Meg, <laughs> and it's Peter voice. Uh, well, <laughs> that'd be so stupid, but I'd watch it. Thomas Jane. Oh, the Punisher. Yeah, no. I don't like the Punisher. Anyway, so the, the, was what, do you think that was the pitch meeting for the Meg? You saw the Meg. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's pretty much it. It was spot on. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind. It's one of those movies where I, I, I don't, I can watch it again. Samuel L. Jackson. Michael B. Jordan. No, Samuel L. Jackson. He already did Deep Blue Sea, and then he did Snakes on a Plane. Bam. Now, big it. I'm tired of this giant ass shark and this giant ass ocean. But here's another spoiler because we already said, said it's a spoiler. They left kind of like a cliffhanger towards the end of the movie. Because remember, there's two sharks. Remember. Yeah, one got eaten by the other shark. They killed the one shark. And the uh, the fat guy, he's hanging out. Remember, he's hanging out like supposed to be, oh, he's falling into the mouth of the, de of the shark. And then the bigger shark comes and eats both of them. Okay. And the black guy lives! Spoilers. I was waiting for him to die. Discount uh, LL Cool J died. No, uh, didn't die. I was waiting yeah. for him to die. That was cool. Anyways. Anyway, I'm Blackie Chan. I'm Pookie Alvarez. Till next time, get out of here.